Hey everyone, I'm Gunvale and I'm glad to be back. It's been a while, hasn't it? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through an article which I've written and posted on my new educational website, which is hackarcana.com. Come join us. We have uh, CTF challenges, we have articles, and we will have a lot of more fun stuff in the future as well. So the article is actually about something which caught me by surprise. I had to recently explain what happens when you press Ctrl D in a terminal, like you're in a Linux terminal in a bash session, for example, and you press Ctrl D and bash exits, right? But, uh, well, that's what happens on the surface level. But what, what happens technically, right? Like on a technical level, what does actually happen? And I always thought it's going to be like, oh, actually the foreground processes uh, standard input is closing, but that's totally not the case, that's totally wrong. Actually, we've done a poll on uh, YouTube and also on LinkedIn and around like 17 to 20% of people get this one right. So I'm pretty sure most of you are going to be surprised though, about like what actually happens when you press Ctrl D in a terminal. So let's get through it. The article is titled Linux Terminal Ctrl D is like pressing Enter. What I always thought, and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in this, was that pressing Ctrl D in the terminal closes the standard input for the running process. Alternatively, I've heard that Ctrl D sends an end of file signal to the application. But if you actually think about it, it just doesn't make any sense. After all, in bash, you can press Ctrl D if the line isn't empty and nothing happens. Perhaps that's a terminal setting which bash changes or maybe something more or, or as in this case, something less is going on. Let's investigate. Somebody's wrong on the internet. Apart from the correct answer to which we'll get shortly, there are two lead answers on what does Ctrl plus D in a terminal do that can be found on the internet and both are wrong. The first one is, it sends an end of file signal marker or character to the running program. And the second one is, it closes the standard input of the running program, as I already told you, that's not, not the case. The first answer is somewhat correct, we'll get to it later, but not in the way you think. Let's start with the fact that, technically speaking, there's no such thing as an end of file signal, at least in terms of Linux signals like SIGKILL, SIGSEGV, and so on. So pressing Ctrl D doesn't actually send any signals to the process. There are other terminal key combinations that do send signals to the process, like for example, Ctrl backslash is sending sick quit. We can check that by the way, so let's do cat. And now I'm pressing Ctrl backslash and yeah, quit, core dump, because well, the cat got killed. Uh, so yeah, there are other terminal key combinations that do, for example, Control backslash sending sick quit, but Control D just isn't one of them. There's also no such thing as end of file marker or an end of file character. If you're thinking there's end of file character in 255, that's actually a misunderstanding. That's not the case at all. So end of file is in general a pretty misunderstood thing, uh, but that's a topic for another article and I guess another video. If you're curious, uh, we also spent some time discussing end of file in our upcoming Mastering Binary Files and Protocols course. So this is uh, a message from our sponsor, which is, I guess, me. Uh, I'm going to run in April, or rather April to June, a course uh, about, uh, well, Mastering Binary Files and Protocols, the complete journey. It's basically a uh, a course which gets you from, oh, I have absolutely no idea how to deal with these like hex editors and binary files and how to dislike protocols to uh, through like actually learning hex editors, actually learning how uh, binary file formats and data formats work uh, to being able to reverse engineer binary file formats and protocols even without having any documentation for them. So it's basically, as the title says, a complete journey. If you're interested, go to hackarcana.com and also look in the description of the video for a discount link. Okay, so that was the message from our sponsor, which uh, which is funny because it was me, but okay. So um, the second answer, which admittedly is what I thought for a long time, is totally wrong. The standard input for the given foreground process remains unharmed. To test this, just type in, in bash, date, but like just two first letter DA, followed by pressing Ctrl D and then followed by typing TE. So TE, well, the standard input, assuming this happens, should be closed. But when you finally press enter, um, well, it actually works. So as you'll see, it works normally and the, the standard, uh, sorry, standard input still works without issues. Uh, 
so it remains open. So we can actually test it. Let's run bash, but in no editing mode. Uh, so normally bash runs with readline uh, using readline library, which is actually doing some actual changes to um, to the way the terminal behaves. So running bash with no editing makes sure that we have a typical environment. Let's do da, control D, and now te and enter. And as you can see, everything works. So now I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to type date and I'm going to press control D twice. Ah, see what happens. It actually executed date, but it didn't do a new line. Why is that? Yeah, so what control D actually does? Surprisingly, in the, or rather under the normal terminal settings, which is uh, called a canonical, sorry, a canonical mode, it behaves almost identically to pressing enter with one minor difference. Let's start by explaining what pressing enter does. And uh, the first one is, this is probably what you're thinking about, it emits a new line control character denoted usually as uh, backslash n, which causes the cursor to do two things, which is move to the beginning of the next line. And these are actually two things, like one thing is move to the next line, but the second thing is move to the beginning of that line. Because otherwise, well, if you just move one line down, the cursor will be on the same in the same column. And the second um, item on this list is, but more importantly, it actually forces the text entered in the current line in the terminal to be sent to the underlying foreground process. You see, in the normal canonical mode, whatever you type using the keyboard in the terminal window isn't immediately sent to the application. Instead, the terminal application, so for example, I have console here, KD console, but it, you can have, I don't know, genome terminal, Xterm, or whatever else, it actually handles the current line to allow you to do simple edits on it. Like, for example, you'd make a typo, so you want to press back, backspace, right? And uh, then correct the typo. So these kind of like simple edits. And only when you press enter, whatever you have entered in that line is sent to the application together with the accompanying new line control character backslash n, which means that whatever I'm typing here now isn't actually sent to bash, like bash has no idea about that. And this is mostly because I'm in no editing mode, but uh, in general, this is what happens with normal applications which are using standard input. You can, thanks to that, you know, correct typos, which is a wonderful thing. So when, what pressing control D actually does is the second item on the list above. It forces the text entered in the currently edited line to be sent to the underlying foreground process. Note that in contrast to enter, control D character itself, which is by the way, uh, zero, four hexadecimal, or like whatever, four in the ASCII table, which is called end of transmission or EOT to friends, it's not sent to the application. So when you press enter, it sends the line, if it flashes the input, but it also sends this new line character. When you press Ctrl D, it flashes the line, but it never sends any other characters, like neither this like 04, or neither any you know new line. So this is why I typed date, and now I pressed Ctrl D twice, and this actually forced Bash to receive it. And there happened one more thing, which is in the next section. So yes, Ctrl D basically flashes the input. So what's the source of this end of file confusion? To explain this, we first need to look at the expectations related to the low level reading functions uh, or receiving functions in their blocking variant, which is read or receive. Calling a blocking read function on a file descriptor blocks the execution of the given thread until either data arrives or something happens to the other side of a transaction. So it disconnects, for example. When read returns, it brings back two things perhaps some data, not necessarily, but maybe some data, but also a number indicating how much data it brought back. And negative numbers denote that there was an error, so minus one, for example, would be an error. Uh, but more to the point, if read is called on a network TCP socket, it would return zero in case the other side of a connection disconnected. Or at least it signals that, uh, well, it's done sending data. It will send no more data, which you can do actually in TCP. And yes, you can use read on TCP sockets as well. You don't have to use it on standard input or like files. So yeah, like if read returns zero, 
uh, it kind of means that the other side disconnected, and this is how it was the expectation. As such, a blocking read receive function returning zero but not signaling an error can be considered in some scenarios as end of data or end of file if you insist on using the file instead of data here. So getting back to control D, pressing it when the line is empty will make the other side's receiving uh, or reading function return zero uh, because, well, the line was empty. So we do force this like flash of nothing. So nothing is sent, nothing was in the line, nothing is sent to the application, but this, uh, this event of sending actually happens. And as such, the other side can choose, and this is a choice actually, to interpret this as, oh no, the other side disconnected, so I guess we're done here. And like bash does, or like Python interpreter, they just exit. Sometimes this is done on purpose. For example, um, Bash or Python's interactive interpreter and other, you know, like uh, read, evaluate, and like print uh, and repeat kind of interactive terminal applications, they will basically treat this as a signal that the user is done and the interactive application can exit. And no, uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this article, I don't mean a Linux interprocess signal like SIGKILL here. I mean signal as just letting the other side know about something. In this case, by force flashing an empty line, we let the other side know that, hey, we want to, we're done, we want to exit. Other times, the application might be pretty confused and, for example, fall into an infinite loop. If you learned C or C++, you might have experienced this behavior. And let's look at an example. So I already have this example here, and this is like a typical calculator application, which like, I guess everyone, uh, everyone writes when learning a programming language. So the way it works, I already have it compiled, I think. Uh, let, you know what, I'm going to exit this uh, non-readline variant of bash back to typical bash. Okay, and let's run it. It asks, it runs in an infinite loop, by the way. It asks us first to enter a number, and then when using C in, it actually reads the number. So we're going to say five, then we are going to say seven, and then it asks us for a math operation, we are going to say plus, and it says result 12, and then it goes to the beginning of this infinite loop. Now, if we press Control D, as you can see, it will just like flood the screen with asking us about the numbers and saying unknown op, and yeah, it's, it's like fully going full throttle in the infinite loop. So what's, what's actually going on here? Because this is kind of funny. And um, this is because while there's nothing wrong with the actual terminal input file descriptor, yeah, it's still there, the higher level libraries, and I mean higher level than the, you know, the actual Cisco level. So the standard C library and the standard C++ library and both, yes, both in this case, set the error flags indicating a likely end-of-file situation has occurred. So yeah, because receive or return in this case, or sorry, read return zero, then these libraries just assume, oh, it's end-of-file. And they set a flag, which is called end-of-file, and yeah. And what they then do is when you try to read more data, they will say, no, 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 we already reached the end of file, so we cannot read anything, and they don't even try reading anything more. They just, they just like, return immediately. So this is why the infinite loop, because CN actually gave up and didn't want to read any more data. So this, of course, is incorrect. And technically, programmer could just use std cn clear and, on top of that, clear error stdn to clear the error flags in both places and continue as usual. Yes, this would actually actually work. The application could continue as usual and you could still enter more data. Okay, and uh, circling back to this uh, hypothesis with like closing the standard input file descriptor, as for the closing uh, of a file descriptor, as already mentioned, that's not what's happening. But if this would happen, the read syscall would actually return not an end of file, but an input output error or EIO, as seen below, and this is a snippet from, um, from S-Trace. And yeah, I, I actually like force closed the terminal in this case, the pseudo terminal and the application said, oh, like, um, yeah, that's an input output error. So what's pretty fun here is like how higher level functions react to control D. I've read that reactor content gets a lot of views, so let's see their actions of some of a couple of higher level standard input reading functions to control D. 
uh, we look at two separate events basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, or rather what, what I have done is I had an empty line and I pressed Ctrl D and uh, I called it an empty flash, as in like line was empty and I forced the flash. And then I've written something, or rather the next experiment was to write something and press Ctrl D, and that was uh, what I would call a non-empty flash. So starting with the C language, there was this fgets function, which technically is like a read a line function. And what it does, it basically ignores non-empty flashes. So I can type ASDF, press Ctrl D, and nothing happens. Like it just continues because why? Because well, it returned, it, I forced flash ASDF, which is four letters, right? So read returned four letters and that's absolutely fine. If I would press Ctrl D again or press Ctrl D on an empty line, that would actually, um, well, um, return zero and fgets would be then, yeah, end of file reached and it would set this error flag. And we would have to clear this error flag because before we could read anything else from standard input. And Pythons, like switching to Python, Python's uh, sysstdn readline method actually behaves almost the same way, but it doesn't set any error flags. So I can use readline um, no problem again without clearing any error flags, which I think is a little bit better behavior. I, I do prefer this one. What's pretty funny is like Python's input. So let's, let's actually try this one. I'm going to run Python's input and I'm going to press now on an empty line, Control D and it throws an end of file error, which is actually an exception in this case. Let's run it again. Now I'm going to input ASDF, press Ctrl D once, nothing happens. And now when I press Ctrl D again, nothing happens. I, I'm spamming Ctrl D, nothing happens, which is kind of funny, like this is totally different from what uh, the other functions did. And I had to press enter for this to actually proceed, to proceed. Yeah, I could go on, but this is actually a pretty cool experiment to conduct on your own. So yeah, grab your homework below. And the homework is uh, find a couple of other functions in your favorite programming language and uh, try the same experiment or rather try four different experiments. Experiments, first one is to control D on an empty line. Then the second experiment is enter some data, press control D and see what happens, if anything. Uh, the third experiment is like enter some data, press Ctrl D and then press Ctrl D again. What's interesting here is whether it will behave the same way as in the first experiment. And for some functions like fgets, right, it would behave the same. For this Python's input, it did not behave the same. The fourth one is kind of redundant, nothing, uh, nothing different than the second experiment should happen there. It's basically if we input AS, then press Ctrl D and then DF and Ctrl D again. So like some data, Ctrl D, some data, Ctrl D and see if uh, how the application reacts to that. Uh, a pretty interesting application of a rather a standard input reading function. If you run cat, for example, if you type ASDF, well, nothing happens, right? When you press enter, only the data which you inputted is echoed back to you. But if you press Ctrl D, it actually, well, obviously immediately outputs it, and if I press Ctrl D again, it just exits. And yeah, you can do it, uh, do the same experiments with your, again, favorite uh, programming languages and the functions for reading standard input there. So yeah, that's it basically. So thank you very much for your attention. Again, check out Hack Arcana. We also have a Discord. And if you have any comments or if this actually took you by surprise, uh, and if you would want me to go through other of my articles, just leave a note in the comments. And that's it. So thank you and take care. Have a great day.